My name is Alex Dorge and I'm an Ansible specialist and I'm going to be walking through event-driven Ansible event streams that were released as part of the automation platform 2.5 release. So what is event streams and why is it something that you should care about? So event streams are specifically a new part of the automation platform that was released in the automation platform 2.5. I can use event-driven Ansible 2.5 with the 2.4 automation controller. So just something to think about if you are going through the upgrade process, but obviously upgrading the entire platform to 2.5 would make that significantly easier. So what is the purpose of them? How do they work? They're specifically designed for events pushed to event-driven Ansible. So any sort of webhook type source, so ansible.eda.webhook, the Red Hat Insights webhook, or even the Dynatrace webhook, all would take advantage of this. So in the past, when I created any sort of webhook type, I would have to define a specific port, 5001, or really whatever port that you wanted to, open up firewalls rules for that particular port, and ensure that as I created multiple rulebook activations, that I didn't reuse that port because it would require and cause conflicts. Now with event streams, it is part of the platform to create that event stream. It has a single port, and uses the same overall UI. So it's all going to the platform UI with just a different new UID at the end. So as I create more event streams, I don't have to open up additional ports, additional firewall rules. All of that's handled with a single firewall rule to the platform UI and API. Because of how this works and the fact that it's going to the platform URL instead of the individual event-driven Ansible controller URLs, this allows me to use HA for event-driven Ansible. So I can horizontally scale out my event-driven Ansible controllers. As I talked about, since I don't have to create a new port for every rulebook, this also has a nice aspect of not needing a new route in OpenShift. In 2.4, if I created a rulebook activation, every time I restarted that rulebook activation, it would create a new service, which would require updating a route to point to that service. Since now from the webhook side of things, it actually points to the event stream, I don't need to do that. I can restart and adjust rulebook activations, create new rulebook activations at will without having to worry about adjusting the route to that new service each time. So it's much, much easier to manage from an OpenShift perspective. This does not require any changes to your existing rulebooks. It actually just strips out the header at the top of the playbook. So it'll remove the host, the port, and replace that with a PG listener source, which is part of the Ansible.eda collection. The only thing you might need to remove is if you're attaching certificates, so if you're doing SSL certs or doing a custom token to do that authentication, you will want to remove that. But the actual conditions and rules and JSON payload will all be exactly the same. Since you are stripping out that token, the nice thing is the event stream handles that authentication for you. So as part of setting up whatever the event stream type is, whether it's token, whether it's basic auth, whether it's service now, you will have to assign a credential to that event stream and that will handle that authentication mechanism to, to ensure that that source is actually a valid source. It's not someone randomly sending a curl command to event driven Ansible. It is a valid and authenticated source and that would then get pushed to the underlying rulebook activations. So I know if you've never done this before, you may not understand how I generate that token. It is just a random token. So you can use a random token generator or something like Bitwarden, which can create random passwords and tokens for you. That's what I leveraged to create a random string of characters that I place both as a credential in the automation platform, as well as in the initiating source for my webhook. So what does this look like from a networking and architecture perspective? The previous version 2.4 is on the left. So each alerting configuration had to be configured to point to a specific URL and specific port. So if I had multiple rulebook activations, I'd have to update it to point, in this case, to port 5123 and port 5456. So a lot of firewall ch ch changes. And if I wanted the same source, such as ServiceNow, it wasn't possible to do that other than having a large rulebook that multiple teams might have to contribute to. With this simplified event routing, I can have multiple rulebook activations listening to the same event stream. So again, taking ServiceNow as an example, I could have four, five, six rulebook activations all listening to that same event stream. So if I have incidents from ServiceNow being pushed to my event stream, I could have the infrastructure team have its own rulebook activation, the networking team have its own rulebook activation, the monitoring team have its own rulebook activation, 
all listening to that same event stream. So it's one configuration in ServiceNow, one URL to point to, and then each team can have their own rulebook activation so they can control their own rulebooks, both from a conditions perspective, as well as the actual job or workflow job templates that you wanna launch. So it's a much easier way to set this up, both in the front side for security, as well as the back side to actually creating those rule books and integrating them. So let's walk through the process of actually creating an event stream and integrating it with an existing platform like ServiceNow. So jumping into the demonstration, the automation platform, I've created a brand new user that has nothing set up with event-driven Ansible. So no rule audits, no projects, nothing. So this gives me a fresh start to go through the process of kind of setting up what I need for event-driven Ansible. So I'm gonna start off by creating my credentials just cause that's going to be easiest for me to do. So I really need to create two credentials, one for the Red Hat automation platform so this can be, you know, whatever organization that user has access to. And in this case, I want to do the Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform credential type. So this will be the URL to my platform. But then I also have to add in slash API slash controller because of how the API changes have worked with the 2.5 platform. You need to add this in. If you are leveraging a 2.5 instance of EDA with 2.4 controller, you would not add this piece in. So I do have an EDA user that I've created, and then I'm going to set that piece up. You can set up an OAuth2 token if you've done that already, but in this case, I'm just gonna set this up as my AAP credential. I'm then gonna create another credential because I'm gonna set this up to connect with Dynatrace. So I'll do Dynatrace EDA demo cred. Again, assign it to the EDA org. And in this case, I'm just gonna use a token. So I'm gonna use conveniently enough the token event stream type, because I will end up creating an event stream. And for any sort of token base off, it's just a randomly generated token. So it's not something that Ansible is creating. It's not something that the end system is creating. So in my case, I'm just gonna use Bitwarden. So I'm actually gonna go into Bitwarden, generate password copied, that's it. So I'm just gonna paste that particular token in and that will be my token going forward for that connectivity. So obviously I need to keep this because I will have to create this in Datadog as well. So I'm just gonna create that credential and those will be the two credentials that I need for this process to work. Next, I'm going to pull in a project. So I need some sort of Git repository in order to pull this from. Fortunately, I do already have a project set up. So again, I'll assign it to my org and I'll copy it from my existing project. So I'll go back to this repo and copy my HTTPS URL. I don't have a proxy or anything like that. You can assign a Git credential. So if it is a private repository, I can leverage that capability. But in this case, I'll just create the project and you'll see that it is off and running. The only other credential I might need to create if I haven't already created it would be a decision environment and a container registry credential. I'm not going to worry about that for now because in this case, I'm just going to focus on the event stream first. So I wanna create my event stream. So as you can see, I don't already have one created and I'm gonna create a data dog event stream EDA demo, assign it to my existing organization that this user is part of. And again, because as I talked about before, this can be token based since I'm gonna have a token between the two. I'm not gonna add any additional header and then I'll click create event stream. So this is now my URL that I'm going to need to paste into that end system because that's how it's going to set up that webhook. You can drop off the 443 because obviously 443 is default, but I do wanna now create that integration inside Datadog. So I have already gone into Datadog, gone to the integrations. I do have an existing webhook, but in this case, I'm not going to use that one. I'm gonna create a brand new one. So first I do wanna create that EDA token. And I'll just call it EDA25 token. And I will cut, paste that value that I created before. And I'll even hide it so you can't see it. Save. We'll call it EDA new token to make this easier. I pay attention to the alerts and then I'm just going to copy and paste this payload because this is what I'm going to want to use for the new one as well. So I'll call it EDA new webhook. Paste in that new payload and then I'm also going to go back to the automation platform, copy this URL. 
and paste this in here. And because I don't like having the 443, I'm just gonna get rid of that. And then I can save it. I am also gonna add in a custom header because that is part of my process just because that's how it's gonna do that authentication. So it's basically just adding a bearer token. So if you've ever seen the JSON payload for a bearer token before, you're gonna see that it looks just like this. So this will then pass in that EDA new token as a variable in there and which that will handle the authentication between the two. And again, helps for a member of these different pieces for the names. So EDA new webbook with underscores. Now I can save it. So this is fully ready to go. I can use this for all future events. So I've got my new and old webhook set. And as you can see, this 12706 matches the URL that I have here. So now from the Datadog side, all I would need to do is add that to an existing monitor. So I have a monitor for high CPU usage here. I can just go into edit. And then in the monitor section and notification section, I can just add in at and then pick that webhook that I've created. So I'll create that new webhook, click save, and then I'll go back into it and do a test. So even though I don't have a rulebook activation running, I can see that this event already exists. And that's kind of the nice thing about some of the capabilities. So if I go back and edit, I can do this test notification and I'll just pick alert on a particular host and click run test and you'll see it was sent. So if I go back in the platform, I could see that an event was actually received. So this is exactly what I would want to expect. This certainly makes my process much easier so I don't have to worry about, you know, am I able to handle the, the events coming in firewall rules. This is handled before I ever actually create any rulebook activations. So I will need a decision environment and I will need a credential type. So I will just to prove that all these things work, I'll create a container registry credential. And this is where I'd create that credential registry type. And maybe in this case, I'll do registry.redhat.io and I'll do my Red Hat username and password. And then I just have to create that decision environment. So Obviously, I have to assign that credential, and then this is the decision environment that will get actually assigned into that. So really, the only thing left to do is actually get that rulebook activation running. So let's do that next. So now that I have all the pieces set up, I can create that rulebook activation, which will connect to that event stream and use that AAP credential to actually populate and run any sort of jobs or workflows that I've created. So I'm going to go into this rulebook activation section. I'm going to click Create Rulebook, and I'll call it data dog EDA user activation, select my existing organization, select the only project in this case that I have access to, and I'm going to pick my data dog rulebook. So this data dog rulebook, as you can see, has a source with a specific name for it. This is what's going to get replaced by that event stream, and I'll show how that happens. And then I've already created a few rules that are designed for that high CPU usage web server down or debug if that particular event is not triggered, so you will see that high memory usage because I do have a debug set up for it. So going back to the platform, I'm going to then pick that event stream that I created. So I'm gonna click this gear. And because I only have one source, that's gonna be the only source and will auto-populate. And because I only currently have one event stream, that will also auto-populate. But if you've got more than one, you can click the drop down and pick the exact event stream that you wanna to subscribe to. And then it will show me what source is going to get replaced by this event stream. So it's going to basically strip out this host and port. So I don't need to specifically have port 4 at 999 open for event-driven Ansible to receive this payload. So I click Save. I do need to select that credential so it can launch jobs or workflows in the automation platform. And then I need to pick my decision environment. You can change your restart policy or log level if you want to see more. I'm going to keep it actually at the debug level so you can see exactly what's happening as this rulebook runs. And I click Create Rulebook Activation. And this would pull in that decision environment if it's not already there, 
or have it up and running. So it'll quickly switch from pending to running. And I can see it starting. So if I click into here, just like in the event driven Ansible 2.4, it's going to go through the process of pulling that image and then having it up and ready and ready to go. So I do want to verify that this is up and running. I can see, yep, it's gone through a whole bunch of debug steps. It's successfully connected to my automation controller on version 4.6.2, which conveniently enough matches with the version of Mon, so that is a good sign. So it has got all the rules and up and ready to go. So I can actually test this. So if I do want to see you know, this existing rule book without actually causing a memory trigger, once again, I can go this alert on this particular host, click run test, and I should see that pop through here in just about a second. And then I'll also, I can go to my rule audit, and I can see that this rule audit was triggered with the exact event payload that was received. So this is a very easy way to integrate push-based alerts. So whether this is Datadog, whether this is Dynatrace, whether this is Alert Manager, whether this is ServiceNow, everything is configured the same way. So I'll have to create that credential for the automation platform, credential for the registry, and then that token event stream or ServiceNow event stream uh, credential based on what type I'm using, then create the event stream itself and create that rulebook activation that will get attached to that event stream. And then this event stream URL will be that URL for everything. So I can have as many rulebook activations as I want tied to this particular event stream. So as I talked about earlier, this is your easy way to have multiple teams all listening to that same source. So now that I've walked through an example of setting up an event stream on both sides of the equation, I'm going to leave in the description down below the documentation that walks through setting up that simplified event routing, aka the event stream. And I'll also include a blog that talks about what's new in EDA in 2.5, which again walks through the event stream capability, the authentication, the tokens, as well as that horizontal scaling in HA. So there's a lot of new capabilities that exist with the automation platform 2.5 and specifically event-driven Ansible. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about event streams and how they can definitely increase your capability when leveraging event-driven Ansible. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.